Hey everybody, welcome to the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. I'm Chris, this is my channel. How this channel works is I like to drink craft beer, I like to review craft beer, and I don't like to pay a whole lot of money to do it. So the beers that I review usually come in around the $2 price range, and such is the case with today's selection. I paid $1.79 for a 12 ounce bottle of the Atomizer Ultrasonic Infused Pale Ale from False Ale Brewing. <coughs> Now, uh, <clears throat> I did I did have there um, in the same series as the Atomizer, is the uh, is the IPA which um, I did review previously. Gave it a 3.5. This particular bottle is four months old, so it's very very fresh uh, in terms of pale ales. It has a 6.6 .6 ABV. Typically, American pale ales can come in between 4.5 and 6.2 ABVs. This has 32 IBUs. Typically, American pale ales have between 30 and 50 IBUs, so it's actually on the low end of the bitterness scale. Um, this, I'm, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I got a little confused there. Um, now I will read if it does have it on here. No, it doesn't. Okay, they they use some ultrasonic form of. Of mechanism to um, to atomize the hops. I don't know what exactly they do. They keep it kind of hush hush. They make mention of it on the website, but they don't really uh, they don't really explain in detail what it is that they do. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that uh, the IPA I gave it a 3.5. I thought it was pretty good, but I didn't think it was exceptional. And personally, I can't tell the distinction between an atomized hop and one that isn't atomized. Uh, just some quick reviewing notes of, among the reviewing community. Only one of my friends has reviewed this beer on Untapped, given it a 3.75. Only 895 of us have reviewed it on Untapped collectively, given it a cumulative total of 3.63. Beer Advocate has only eight rankings, giving it a cumulative score of 3.83, which on their scale is very good. <laughs> So there you have it. And the story with pale ales is that pale ale, American pale ales are really uh, the the overly not over hopped, but the um, seriously hopped Amer uh, British pale ales. The, uh, American pale ales did start out as British pale ales. Uh, we added more hops to it, and that's basically the distinction between an American pale ale and a British pale ale. So there you have it, and that is why I always use my British um, pint glass when uh, I drink an APA, I'm sorry, an uh, APA, American Pale Ale, because it was based upon a British uh, British variety. Kelly, if you're watching, got another cap for you. My man Kelly collects caps. He's going to do some kind of art project. I'm not exactly sure what, but anyway, there's another cap for you. Let's see how this pours, shall we? That's pouring a very nice golden color. What you're seeing on the camera is maybe... An entire shade darker. Not too much though, but yeah, I'd, I'd say a full shade darker. Um, now let's set this down, get a good look at this beer. I'm going to describe that as medium high carbonation. And yeah, you're, you're seeing at least one shade, maybe even two full shades darker. Uh, this is actually very golden in color, kind of hazy. Um, just a little bit of a golden color. This head seems to be fairly resilient, doesn't seem to be going much of anywhere. I'm going to give a quick beard wipe, see what I come across. Citrus is what I came across more than anything. I'm going to stick my schnoz in, see what I can find. Hops and citrus. Um, grapefruit and hops is what I smell more than anything. I don't smell any of the malt. Uh, a little bit of pininess there. Mostly mostly citrus and, and uh, that... Uh, that juicy hop smell. So uh, I'm going to quit yapping my flap and get to drinking. Cheers. Well, I got to say the Atomizer Pale Ale is better than the Atomizer IPA. This is a super hoppy pale ale. <coughs> it's hoppy without being overly bitter. I really appreciate it when a brewer can get the, the essence of a, of a hop out without being overly bitter. Um, so you're tasting hop juice, hop oil, but you're not really tasting the bitterness that hops can produce. That's not to say this is not a bitter beer. 32 IBUs is on the lower scale, but still you're tasting bitterness. I'm going to describe that as probably a, 
probably a medium low mouthfeel, just a little bit of spikiness, no real alcohol burn whatsoever. Um, sort of a creamy finish. Rolling across the tongue, basically what you taste is um, a little bit of the malt profile in the back, yes, the, it, it is there, even though you can't necessarily distinguish it in the bouquet. It is coming through, it, it's tempering the uh, the hops. <coughs> this is actually a pretty damn good beer. I'm going to be giving this a 4.0, uh, even though it comes out of bottles, so that means that it, if it had come out of can, I'd get a 4.25, but... Um, now, this is a really good beer, and if even though the head is kind of low, you can see that it is still it's still there. So this is a it, it's a semi-resilient head. A um, little bit of the fruitiness, uh, mostly just hop. Hop profile is what I'm getting, and a little bit of temper and temperance with the uh, malt. Uh, like I said, no alcohol burn. About a medium low mouthfeel. Creamy finish. All in all, a really good American pale ale. So, guys, uh, as I said, paid a buck seventy-nine for this, and I think uh, I think that's a pretty good deal for such a good beer. So, guys, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, drink good beer and don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.